for today's bit of mythology, I want to talk about another one of the monsters of classical Greek mythology, specifically the Minotaur. For some reason this week I've just been thinking a lot about how most of the monsters in Greek myth really didn't deserve it, and how most of them were victims of circumstance more than willing participants. So we're going to get into that and use the Minotaur as our example case. So the basic story of the Minotaur goes thusly. King Minos of Crete asked that Poseidon bless him with a wondrous bull from the ocean that he would then sacrifice back to Poseidon. Poseidon sent the bull, maintaining his part of the bargain. Upon seeing how wonderful the bull was, however, King Minos decided, nope, I'm going to keep it, and instead sacrificed a different one. Naturally, this made Poseidon angry. And as is true of most of the Greek gods, when they are angry, they do pretty heinous things to people. In this case, the victim was not Minos himself. It was his wife. Poseidon cursed her so that she was infatuated with the bull. Not just in a, I'm fascinated by you, you're such an interesting creature, I want to spend all my time with you, but in a sexual way. As is typical in Greek myth, this resulted in some trickery and some undesired children. In this case, to ensure that the bull didn't just kill her, because as punishment, Poseidon had struck it mad so that it would attempt to trample anyone who got close to it. Minos's wife, Paisai, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, asked for help of the inventor Daedalus. So he constructed an artificial cow that she then climbed inside and allowed the bull to do the nasty with her. This resulted in birthing a child. The child's name was Asterios, the Minotaur. Being bestial in nature, having the body of a man and the head of a bull, Minos instructed Daedalus to create a maze, a labyrinth, and placed his son, well, his wife's son, into it. We don't hear about the Minotaur for a bit in the mythology until Theseus comes and slays him because, as part of King Minos' cruelty, he was, every year, sacrificing 14 youths to his son, the Minotaur. Seven young men and seven young women. So what can we learn from this myth? What can we learn about human nature? Because myths exist to try to explain something about the world, to explain things that are inherently difficult to understand. First off, he promises, none of this would have happened if Minos had just kept his promise and sacrificed the bull as he had said he would. Thought number two about what we can learn from this. Once a mistake has been made, don't make it worse. Minos and his wife could have solved this problem, but instead it kept getting bigger and bigger and worse and worse because they wouldn't just solve it. If we want to take a more literal approach on the scenario here, it has to deal with adultery, with wanting something that your spouse could not provide. It also had to do with greed. Minos was greedy. And so the child was bestial, behaved like a monster. But if you follow the story in the myth, it's because he was abandoned inside a labyrinth. He was not cared for. He was not taught. I guess part of the reason I've been thinking about this so much this week, and just monsters in general, particularly in classical Greek mythology, because many of the monsters in Greek mythology are just tragedies. Classical Greek mythology in general is just tragedy. It makes me wonder what the average person was dealing with in their life at that time. One of the interesting tidbits that I've learned in my study of literature and movies and film is horror 
as a genre depicts what people are most afraid of in the moment that it's being produced. A lot of the things in Greek mythology are pretty horrifying. Returning to the myth of, of the Minotaur, what aspects were people afraid of? They were afraid of a king who was a tyrant, who would sacrifice them for his own greed. I guess maybe that's why I'm thinking about it right now. Because this is not just an American observation, this is worldwide. There is a group of people, a classification of people, who want to redistribute all the wealth in the world while keeping themselves on top. And if we look at it historically, every time people have tried this, it has failed miserably. It sounds fantastic on paper until you realize that the only ones who actually get anything out of it are those who are at the very tippy top of the pyramid, because it's always a pyramid scheme. Just like the myth of the Minotaur, where 14 young people were being sacrificed every year to keep it contained, we're watching the youth be sacrificed for greed, and what they're being sacrificed to is not it's not an individual. It's not a, a monster that you can go and slay like Theseus did. Just some rambling thoughts. What capricious gods are we choosing to pray to as a society? Who are we not keeping our commitments to and therefore suffering consequences? Something to consider. That was a very rambling way of putting some thoughts into a video about the Minotaur and its myth, how the myth of the Minotaur affects or could be interpreted by a modern audience. If you made it to the end, really grateful to you. Check out the links in the description. And until next time, walk in the light, my friends.